What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It is yours truly, Fitzy, and as you guys voted right here, even though it's hard to read, uh, which would you guys like to see me cover today or tomorrow? Tomorrow being today. How good is Armored Mewtwo? You guys didn't want to see that. How good are Pokemon that got new moves? 91% of you guys want to know how good are the Pokemon that got new moves uh, just recently in Pokemon Go. And, well, let's go over it. So, here are the Pokemon that got new moves. We got Lolan Raichu with Grass Knot, uh, Vile Plume, Sludge Bomb, Hypno, yada yada yada. You guys are probably already up to date on this. If not, here you go. Uh, make sure you follow Couple of Gaming on Twitter, by the way. They are fantastic. So, what we're going to cover today is Aerodactyl and Agron as Rock-type attackers. We're going to cover how much better Articuno got with Ice Shard against other Ice-type Pokemon. We're going to cover how Moltres stacks up in the flying type now that has a wing attack as a flying quick move coupled with sky attack. And then, spoiler alert, it's not the best flying attacker in the game. Both Pokey AK, FLW videos, and even a recent Pokemon Go Hub article actually has misinformation. And I love all, not only the Pokemon Go Hub and my fellow co workers. But I love FLW videos and Pokey AK. They all mean well. They're awesome. Make sure you subscribe to their channel. But Moltres is not the best flying attacker in the game. And we will go over that with sufficient evidence. And uh, finally, Charm. We're going to compare Clefable, Wigglytuff, Granbull, Gardevoir, and Togekiss. We won't do Glade because Glade has the same uh, stats as Gardevoir. We're going to go over how well uh, they do compared to each other using Charm with a Fairy moveset. So first off, let's go with the rock type attackers. Now, it's obvious that Rampardos here is going to be king. Let, let's be honest, it's going to be king. Let's go ahead and zoom in here a little bit for you, for you guys too. So it's going to be king, right? Smackdown Rock Slide, 1751 DPS, 501 TDO, it's totaling at almost 2700. Tyranitar, Smackdown Stone Edge, 1357 DPS, 716 TDO, totaling at about 1800. Rhyperior we know is pretty good too because it's very tanky, so it can survive longer and deal out a lot of damage as well with 1304 DPS because his attack is a little bit lower than Tyranitar. There's the 704 TDO because it's tanky, coming in at almost 1600, so it's about 200 off. Golem is still a really good Pokemon with Rock Throw and Stone Edge, 1322 DPS, notice that's higher than Rhyperior. Um, 571 TDO though because it's not as tanky and then it comes in about 1321 now here's where things get interesting Agron Smackdown and Stone Edge 1121 TDO is close to that of Golems with a total of 812 so Agron is not bad okay the reason why I say this is you might not have access to Rampardos that's fine you might not have access to Smackdown Tyranitar. But if you only have a couple Rhyperior, you only have a couple Golem, throw Agron on your team. It's fine. When you're going to use, um, like, Moltres, well, I'll just give a Moltres raid, for example. When you're doing four times super effective damage with rock moves, that's going to hurt a lot. So, Agron, although shouldn't be in the front of your team of six, if you need to use an Agron, don't feel bad about it. You're doing a pretty good amount of damage. It has a very high defensive stat, and you're using one of the best movesets in the game. If only if Agron had Rock Slide, it would probably move up this list. I'm not even kidding. It would probably knock out Golem close to Rhyperior, but not, not quite. So Agron did get a buff. It is a little bit better. Um, and now Aerodactyl. Here's where things get interesting as well. Aerodactyl finally has Rock Throw as a fast move. Its charge move is Ancient Power, and I've covered this before on the channel. I'll even link the description to the video in the comment section or in the description down below. Ancient Power does is the best like uh, move set for raids. It's a three bar charge move. It does 70 damage total, doing a total cycle damage of 210. Newsflash: 210 is higher than Stone Edge, which is a one bar charge move that takes forever to charge up. And 210 damage is more than Rock Slide, which is 280 bar charge moves, which means that it's only going to do 160. So Aerodactyl's DPS and TDO don't stack up to what it really does in raids. These numbers lie. And it's simply because it's very hard to 
get calculate the numbers for a raid where there's a three bar charge move. So Aerodactyl, I will say, probably beats out. In terms of DPS, Aerodactyl will probably be above Golem. I'm not even kidding. In terms of DPS, it's probably higher than 1322. So Aerodactyl is actually, I would say, I would go Rampardos, Tyranitar, Aerodactyl in terms of doing damage as fast as possible because the Aerodactyl is a little squishy. It's not super tanky. It's not super squishy. It's just a little squishy. Uh, so Aerodactyl is probably third on this list overall as the best uh, rock attacker. So if we rank these, Rampardos number one, Tyranitar number two, Aerodactyl number three. This is in terms of damage, by the way. Golem number four, Rapira number five, and Agron number six. So Agron made it in the top six. Uh, it might stay there even longer, especially when Mega Evolutions come out. So pretty exciting stuff. If you have a good Aerodactyl, power it up. You will not be upset. Rock type Pokemon are pretty important in raids. So definitely, I would definitely power up an Aerodactyl. Now, going on to the ice types. Things got interesting with Articuno. So first off, Lapras, Ice Shard, Ice Beam. This is kind of a legacy move, but we did have Lapras Day, so a lot of people have access to this now. DPS is 932, TDO is a whopping 509, that's high because Lapras is tanky. So coming in at a total of 413, but then we got Jinx. Jinx has actually always been a good ice attacker because it's got a pretty solid uh, attack stat. I believe it's 223, pretty close to that. Frost Breath, Avalanche, almost 14 DPS, 406, totaling in about 1100. Now this is Articuno, Articuno got Ice Shard, and Icy Wind is its best uh, raid move set and also its best pvp move set as well um by the way using these rock type attackers like agron and aerodactyl in pvp probably not so good right we're basically talking about uh in terms of raids for the most part but i will comment on pvp stuff as well so you probably don't want to use any of these in pvp just saying um but icy wind's good for pvp articuno is good for the master league because it's very good at countering those dragons which are so cluttered in with the master league meta but things are getting better so articuno with ice shard gives it 952 dps 526 tdo with a total of 454 but see frost breath is what it had originally so it went up by about half a dps right and then it went up by about 20 20 extra tdo so, when you total that though, there's quite a difference. So Ice Shard made Articuno very good. And like I said, because Icy Wind is a 3 bar charge move, dealing 60 damage per bar, which means that's a total of 180 damage in one fell swoop, uh, it doesn't display the numbers too well. Again, these numbers lie. So keep that in mind. I will go over the rankings of the Ice types though as we look here. So then we got Weavile, Ice Shard, Avalanche. 1540, 529.76, at almost 19 and a half thousand. So that's crazy. And then Glaceon, Ice Shard, Icy Wind. See, there's the Icy Wind. The numbers lie a little bit. Uh, I will say that Weavile is better than Glaceon, but not by much. Uh, Glaceon's a lot more tankier than Weavile. Even though, like I said, this, this TDO is kind of lying. Um, but not bad. And then Mammoth Swine, Powder Snow, Avalanche, 1533, 62. 627.76 with a whopping okay so mammo seems to be king right and it pretty much is but if we would rank these this is where things get interesting i would go mammo weavile articuno and then glaceon articuno is just so tanky and the when you use ice type pokemon usually it's against like dragon raids or something like rayquaza is going to be coming back and getting a shiny form we know this it's going to happen Rayquaza is four times weak to ice, so having a little bit of extra tankiness with Articuno, uh, other than using Glaceon, is actually going to be great, because you're doing so much damage that the difference in the attack stats aren't going to matter too much. Uh, you might need one extra person if you do this, but you're going to be saving a lot of potions, you're going to be saving a lot of revives, and you're still going to be dealing out a lot of damage. Um, so definitely, I would look into Articuno, Weavile... Glaceon, Mammoth Swine. Just have these have these four on your team, basically. Jinx and Lapras, yeah, maybe. Um, well, let's look at this here. The TDO, the DPS for Glaceon is 1123. So Articuno would not be... Alright. 
Because I said the icy wind numbers lie, right? Well, that's true. So, let's re-rank this. Because, see, this is something that's not really easy to do when you can't accurately depict how well these three bar charge moves are doing, and you can see this. So, Mamoswine, Weavile, Glaceon, Articuno. I would throw Jinx in there, but Jinx is not very tanky at all. Neither is Weavile, but Weavile just d deals out so much more damage than Jinx. And then Lapras. So, you could actually have a unique team of one, two, three, four, five. You actually have a unique team of six if you're a kind of player like that, like Kato Nolan. So just to reiterate, Mamoswine, Weavile, Glaceon, Articuno. Um, Articuno is definitely good though, guys. It's so tanky. Moving on. Wing, like, okay, so, <laughs> I did the disclaimer. Mole Trace with Wing Attack, Sky Attack. 1499 DPS, 645 TDO, 275, right? 2175. Ho-Oh, this, ho -Oh can get a hidden power with flying, right? In Brave Bird. So this kind of lies, okay? Ho is pretty good with uh, having a hidden power with flying, which I have one. It's actually really good. That's why it belongs to be on this list, but I can't really depict that on here, unfortunately. The king of flying attackers is still Rayquaza with Air Slash and Aero Ace, coming at 1554 DPS, 648.91 TDO, coming in at almost 300 more than Moltres. And remember, I've told you this, Aerial Ace is a 3-bar charge move doing, I think, 65 damage? 60 damage? Something like that? This simulation does not factor in very well of those 3-bar charge moves. So the fact that Rayquaza still blows Moltres out of the water for the best flying attacker using this simulation alone is absolutely insane. Rayquaza has 33 more attack stat than Moltres. I looked it up. Rayquaza has 284 attack. Moltres has 251. Rayquaza is still pretty tanky with 213 HP. So the fact of the matter is Rayquaza still remains king from the flying types. And it makes sense. Air Slash does 14 damage. Wing attack only does 8. When you multiply 8 by Moltres' attack stat, and you multiply 14 by Rayquaza's attack stat, it's just comparing apples to oranges, Rayquaza blows it out of the water. So I don't understand why people are saying that Moltres is the best flying attacker. There's no way, and I have it right here. There's no arguing about it, there's no anything. It's literally right here on paper, on my screen. <laughs> this is it. And I knew this right off the bat. I knew it right off the bat that Rayquaza was still going to be king because Air Slash is so superior and Aerial Ace will combine higher, uh, will combine a higher amount of damage in a raid. Now, also, Aerial Ace is better in um, uh, PvP too, because you're going to get it more uh, faster and you'll be able to fire it off more. So, there you have it. Okay, Honchcrow, Honchcrow is a monster. Check this out. According to this. Honchkrow will deal more damage, but it's not as tanky, so it's going to die out. So that's up to you whether you want to use it. But Packet Sky Attack gives it 1526, which is higher than Moltres. 426 TDO, which is where it lacks because this Pokemon will faint out very quickly. And then Star Raptor, I just threw it in there because it technically is the fifth best flying attacker in the game with Wing Attack and Brave Bird. It still puts out some decent uh, t DPS. The TDO is not that good because it's not that tanky, but if Star Raptor gets blessed with a even better uh, charge move, it's going to be pretty good. Even if you give it Aerial Ace, it's going to be pretty solid. So uh, Star, don't sleep on Star Raptor. I think eventually it'll get good. It's got a very high attack stat for the Pidgeot of Gen 4. It's a very good Pokemon, actually, even in the main series games. So we'll have to see. Lastly, the Fairy Pokemon, right? So Gardevoir with Charm and Dazzling Gleam, 1383, 528 TDO. Okay, with a 1400 uh, total, right? Togekiss, a lot more tankier than Gardevoir and across all stats, and it has a good attack stat too. Charm, Dazzling Gleam, 1359, but the TDO is insane because it's going to survive while it's dealing just a little bit less DPS than Gardevoir, which we can agree on is fine. Coming at 1671 total, that's fantastic. Now, Grand Ball, on the other hand, has a very high attack stat as well, and a very high HP stat. Charm and Play Rough. Play Rough is a pretty good move. Um, 
I think Gramble, Gramble does have a higher attack stat than Togekiss and Gardevoir. That's the only thing that makes sense. Because that's why the DPS is so high. But the TDO is lower because it's not overall as tanky. But the total is higher than Gardevoir. So if you want a really good fairy attacker, you better start powering up some Grambles. Don't sleep on that Pokemon. Then Clefable. Uh, this one's fun. Charm, Dazzling Gleam. It's got 1084, 438. That stacks up close to Gramble. But the TDO or the total is not very good because the DPS is kind of low. Clefable is great to throw in gyms. Great to throw in gyms. It's going to be fantastic. I would almost argue it's probably the best Pokemon to throw in gyms uh, above these it, because Clef Clefable it just has well-rounded stats. It really does. I love Clefable. It's always been a fantastic gym defender. Not saying Gardevoir, Togekiss, or Grimble aren't. I'm just saying it always has been since the beginning. Wigglytuff, another one, Charm, Play Rough. A little bit less DPS, yes. A little bit less TDO. Still another fantastic Pokemon to throw in gyms. Uh, as far as PvP for Charm, Charm is okay. It's like Razor Leaf. Is it worth having in PvP? That depends. The Ultra League and the Master League can be littered with fighting and dragon types, so this is where it would come in handy. But if you're trying to actually use Charm to build up your charge move, you probably shouldn't worry about that because it's not going to happen. Charm does not have very high EPT, so trying to charge up a Dazzling Gleam or a Play Rough is going to take a while, especially Dazzling Gleam. Dazzling Gleam has a high energy gain. Uh, it's going to take a while to get a Dazzling Gleam off. Play Rough, it's less, but Charm, basically what you're trying to do is wall your opponent, get in a favorable matchup, literally just use Charm and destroy it. That's what it's best for. So, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Did you enjoy the video? Uh, did you learn anything new? Smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't done this already. Be a part of the Fit City fam. That's it, the boy Fit City. I'm signing off. See you guys in the next Pokemon Go video.